So we're just seeing darker spheres than what you were some madness. And the walls. By the way, this is a dead spider. Um, on the walls. I'm being peeled off the wallpaper right now because th this is, was my bedroom. It's no longer gonna be my bedroom. Um, it's gonna be a media suite. So that's why this all looks horrible. It's just me trying to peel off the, the wallpaper. Um, so I'm pretty a little bit better. <laughs> scenes in it, uh, fun moments, but I kind of expect more. I thought we'd have more, you know, of like the like the DMT simulations, you know, I thought there'd be more of the, um, I'm expecting to see more alternate character parts of the characters we've already seen. Like, yes, it was cool to see is it Richard Reed's from Fantastic Four. I love that they brought Charles Xavier, Patrick Stewart back, <coughs> and they played the X-Men theme as well. Um, I kind of feel that the, and they, they killed him off as well. We, we have now seen Charles Xavier killed off three times. X-Men in the Last Stand, Logan, and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I don't even think the movie deserved, I don't think it deserved the title, Multiverse of Madness. You know, it should have been really just Doctor Strange versus Scarlet Witch or something. That's what it felt like. Like, it didn't... <coughs> Didn't seem to be like you know that much of a great threat. Just one that wants to see the kids again. There's nothing like you know like yes, there's a threat to the, the universe, but it just focuses on Wanda looking to see her kids. You know, there's more of that third drama, and I feel that like lesson for her to learn that she can't have you know what's going after. I just felt that I can see why people probably didn't like it, and I avoided the reviews, you know, because I wanted to go with a fresh mind. Okay, I want that to be tough. Um, don't agree with some of that, obviously. Um, I thought it was a good movie. Um, the thing was, though, with the Scarlet Witch thing, at this point, if you haven't watched WandaVision, you might be a little bit lost where that was heading. But um, I don't think it'll be a deal breaker at the same time, but you would be a little bit more clued in why Wanda is doing this. She's technically no longer Wanda. It, that's the whole point was it was saying she's now the Scarlet Witch because she was actually corrupted by the, what was it, the book? What did they call it? I forget the name of it. <coughs> it. That was the plot point in this book. It says if anyone who uses this magic from this book, it corrupts them. I think that book also appeared in one division, didn't it? Yep. Um, it says that book corrupts them. So basically, this wasn't Wanda doing this. This was that book corrupting her. Um, that was uh, the whole point of why she's acting up and being completely unreasonable. There's a character in it called America Chavez or something. Something like that. Yeah, uh, so basically a teenage girl who can jump through realities. Um, and the reason why Wanda wants her, because she her, her her ability, she can go into any reality she wants and get her kids back. Um, shoot into the moral implications of that too so um so yeah a little bit darker in tone uh a little bit more gore than you would normally see not like oh outright like pure gore but it's not afraid to show a little bit of blood and scenes that weren't normally seen in uh any marvel film like i said uh the uh, Professor Giver got killed, by the way, it isn't the same Professor Giver from the X-Men movies. It's the same actor, but it's not the same character part. Yeah, it's meant to be like an alternative of Venus first completely. Didn't mention anything about the X-Men other than just Xavier himself. Um, there was a Captain Marvel, was in it, but an older, older version of Captain Marvel. Captain Britain, and that's where I think that was called, Captain Britain. Uh, basically, that's uh, Captain Carter. Yeah, that's basically Captain that's Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, it's basically Captain Carter. And then Reed Richards, uh, that he was the only Fantastic Four member to appear. <coughs> and they all get killed. But you can pretty much guarantee that at least the Fantastic Four dude, he'll be back. All of the X Men will definitely be coming back. I do one, one thing I really liked about it is that um, when I 
Kevin and Charles Xavier, they, I mean, not only did they play, you know, the X-Men theme, but there's a quote that he says in that movie, which is a throwback to the X-Men Days of Future Past. And um, whenever he said to Doctor Strange, just because somebody stumbles, loses their way, doesn't mean they're lost forever. That was the exact same quote Patrick Stewart's Charlie Xavier said to James McAvoy's Charlie Xavier mm -hmm. during the scene when their past and future selves meet one another. And I thought that was such a nice wee touch, that was so cool. I love that. Which, and it also like means that um, in another universe, in the Marvel Universe, the X-Men movies are, are, are canon. Looks it. If he said that there and they got Patrick Stewart back, you know, it means somewhere they, if they wanted to, they could find, they could have found Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. And the fact that Deadpool's coming into it as well. But it also makes me wonder more now, you know, with the way the multiverse of madness went, does, does this mean that? And I know it's implied, like they never really outright said it, but it was implied that um, Logan takes place in a different timeline. You know, but that it's never like outright confirmed. I'm wondering, you know, yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to get out here is that it'd be really cool if we got to see more of um the X Men cast coming back. I don't know if we'll ever see James McAvoy or Michael Fassbender back, but you know, hey, we got to see Patrick Stewart. That was class. Yeah. Don't I? I won't. I won't expect to see Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, but we're definitely going to see Ryan Reynolds Deadpool at some point. No, oh, that's already confirmed. I know. Uh, I, I do. I like what they've done with um, Bruce Campbell, the Bruce Campbell cameo. <laughs> <coughs> I didn't clock on that it was him, um, and it was should have because we all know his voice. It wasn't until I seen his face, and um, my God, I don't realize now just how much he's actually aged. You know, I know he's old and all, but like he just, <coughs> you know, and the, the guy was funny getting to punch himself like that there, and then I mean I kind of thought the after credits scene was. Like, you know, a bit of a, it was funny, but you know, we kind of wanted more. But then we kind of got that more with the big credit scene. Maybe if they had have switched, you know, him punching us off as the big credit scene, or, you know, that there, when Charles there and comes up, that should have been the after credit scene. I kind of feel that, you know, it ended perfectly when Dark Strange has the third eye appear on his forehead. He collapses onto the ground and starts screaming. Right, I think the show just left it there, but then the mid credit scene shows him. He's all right. He's got. He's with her. The third eye shows. I kind of felt like that, you know, just ruined any anticipation, the suspense for the next Star Wars movie. What are we gonna do next? I, I like the way it's going because it's making you go, oh my god, holy shit, is he okay? And then it looks like five minutes before it passed, and he's all right. I didn't like that there. I thought they felt you know the show done something different there. I should have showed him again. Um, but I think they were implying that he was the incursion and they need to fix what he calls the Charlie Steon character, I don't know what her name was, I need to look it up, just basically opened up a portal, you see the, the dimension you see in the first Doctor Strange, and yeah, uh, so you see that there. Like I said, there's also another thing, there's a lot more jump scares in it, because it was trying to be like a mild horror movie, because it's Sam Raimi. And the, the bit that uh, hey, Professor Xavier died, that was just pure <coughs> jump scare. Uh, yeah, that was dark. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, what do you call that guy? Well, that was a bit brutal for more. What do you call the guy? Bolt something? The guy who has the power of his voice. Ah, uh, the one that he speaks. You just mm -hmm. don't know, really? Yeah. His mind just went. Pfft. Like I said, a little bit more gore. Not like you don't see his brain explode or anything, but you can clearly see that his head's been damaged. Um, a lot more darker, implied stuff. You know what I just noticed, or did I miss this? You know that trailer whenever Doctor Strange, evil Doctor Strange, is like things just got out of hand. I don't think that was said in the movie, was it? Marvel do that deliberately. In their trailers. Was that was that that was that became that line became iconic became a meme of his class. And also you had purple eyes. Uh, <laughs> but Marvel do those things intensely to throw people off. Sometimes the best parts from the trailer and what you see in the movie is that the the change. You know it was best what happened to her is 
I like the way he said that, it was so cool. Yeah. Maybe he just wanted better for the trailer. I don't want to do that, it's very clever to do that there in the trailer, to mislead the audience. I'm sure the Walking Dead TV show does all the time. That's what I like about Marvel. They're very, very well thought out of their trailers, so they're not going to spoil too much. <coughs> I will say, the uh, cinematography and the editing was, was good. You know, they definitely did ca capture and project that this is a horror movie. You know, that the way it was shot and put together was to let you know that this is not your typical Marvel movie. It's, and I think Sam Raimi was like probably the best guy to do that. What I really loved was that sequence um, when Doctor Strange and America are travelling all through all the different universes and it showed what they all looked like in those universes and what the laws of physics is completely different compared to like the universe that we live in. Like there's one where they're made of paint. There's you know like, Doctor Strange and America are literally like paint. <coughs> then the next one, they are animated cartoon characters. When they go through it, like they turn it into cartoons. Like there's a universe out there in Marvel where everybody is they're like cartoons. They look just they're, 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 it's just they're drawn as cartoons in no other way. And then there's another universe where I'm not sure how you describe them, that it's like animated where they're like they kinda like with like anime. You know, I think what they did there, they must have crossed over into the what if one of the what if universes there, briefly. <coughs> but that actually shows that means that that probably means that if they did that, then the cartoons of Spider-Man, X-Men, Fantastic Four, does that mean they're all canon? <coughs> like, well, um, the woman, uh, what do you call her, Christina, said something, and Marvel, do you do this for real? Uh, when she was naming the universes. She says your uh, I can't remember what the name of her universe was. The number, sorry, but she said you're 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 from the universe six one six. Marvel, do you do that for real? In their universes, they when they go to comic books, they go this is universe blah blah blah. This is universe blah blah blah. So they do do that for real. So, um, the Marvel the universe that we're looking at is called the MCU. It's called the MCU deliberately. It's the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then they go into the different versions of the comics. They go, that's Earth Universe Seven One Two. So yeah, they are implying that everything's canon. So they can theoretically jump to different universes. <coughs> um, they could essentially jump to the comic book universe. <coughs> the what universe? The comic book universe. The ones that they're, they're referring to. Yeah, they get. That, I mean, this is a bit of a stress, but could they jump into a DC universe? There was a comic, um, or comics rather, it was a crossover event. It was really strange. But instead of like uh, simply having, say, Wolverine meet Batman, it wasn't as simple as that. It was actually getting the, the two comic book heroes and mutating them together. So I think, what was it? Batman, I think, morphed into Iron Man or something, and became one person. I need to look it up. <coughs> Not right now. Um, no. No. Mm -hmm. No. What, what are you doing? Getting up. Did you catch my seat? Oh, I thought you said you were going to look it up on your phone. No. My phone's not here. Oh. I, thought, I, thought, I thought that's what you said. You said. Oh, I said I would need to look it up. Oh, I thought you said I'm going to look it up. No. Like, I would need to look it up. We're going to put some pictures here. We're going there, aren't we? Stephen, Stephen Strange attending the wedding of the woman that he loves, but he's not getting married to her. That must suck. Great man for Bowen. Like, he does freaking tear up, but he's trying to hold back tears. Like, he's trying to drown out the cry when he sees her. I don't know what happened there. But I know, I, I've seen the first movie a few times, but like, how did they end up being together? Because he became Dr. Strange. I can remember it. It didn't really fo the first movie didn't really focus on their relationship that much. It was on and off, but um whenever I watched What If I couldn't understand, you know, why I was so dedicated to her, why I loved her so much in that episode, where he loses it. And then 
in this movie it's like oh he really really loved her and I, I, I'm sorry if I'm pissing people off when they watch this here but uh, um, there's just so much to take in when you're watching these Marvel movies it's hard to stay on top of it all at once but um <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, um I think what it might have also been not too sure if she was blipped out or not that's what I thought that it the blip and she moved on yeah plus yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah, he would have been gone for five years, no longer the Sorcerer Supreme, and her thinking he was dead, you know, finds somebody else and falls in love with them, and then whenever he comes back, it's like, you know, she's been gone, and there's nothing to do with it. Yeah. I don't know if that's the truth, now, if that's what happened or not. Plus, I'm probably, they're probably keeping their distance too, because he's a superhero, she's not, she can get killed. Yeah. <coughs> Same reason Spider Man keeps his identity anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Trying to. But then he got that fixed. <coughs> I wonder what one they get her own. I wonder what's going to happen to one that I, you know, wants to be imprisoned or punished for, for being such an asshole. You know. I think there were. No, sorry, Elizabeth Olsen, if you ever do see this. I'm not talking about you, you just talk about your character. Okay, I'm, 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 not, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna attack actors just for playing their roles, okay? But I'm just talking about the character. But yeah, but it's also, uh, like I said, she got corrupted. She was not Wanda. That's what happened with Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is the new version of himself. And this book corrupts you. Basically, um, yeah, uh, one of the universes that Doctor Strange goes into is a universe where his this universe is completely destroyed. Um, an evil version there is of Doctor Strange sitting there. So, you know, <coughs> it kind of reminded me of that place in Loki, that place, that universe that Doctor Strange went to. It reminds me of um where Loki went to. You know, after they get vaporized. It kind of reminded me of that. I wonder if it was at the same place or not. No, uh, the place where Loki got vaporized was um, it wouldn't exist anymore now. Um, the thing where Loki got vaporized is because they couldn't completely erase everything from the universe, so anything that remained was thrown at the end of time or near the end of time, where it could be hidden. And so that's where all the variants went to, so because they couldn't actually erase them, and yeah, so that place doesn't exist anymore. I think because all the universes are now restored, so they can go back to them. So that's what I'm thinking. But I uh, don't think that that was not the place there because it was a. Uh, I think they said it was two universes colliding into each other. Yeah. So, um, that's what destroyed it. Uh, they also did mention in the What If episode where Doctor Strange, where his universe, because he was, uh, again, corrupted, using the dark arts, trying to resurrect his dead wife, uh, Christine. But she just kept dying, so he used the dark arts to try and manipulate it, but they ended up destroying his universe completely. They mentioned that. So, and then, because uh, when Doctor Strange goes into and meets all Professor Xavier and all stuff. They view him as a threat, and they do know about Wanda as well. But he, they actually think it's actually he's the direct threat, and they're technically true, true as well. They're correct, and also around the same time because their doctor in that universe wasn't. He, he got corrupted in the end and had to get rid of him. Well, they're on that planet because they, when they fought his version, their version of Thanos, um, Doctor Strange used that book that you're not meant to use. It worked, but it meant that he was corrupted, and they got rid of him, and that's why they viewed him as a threat. Professor Kieber still trusted this one, he, because he could read his mind. That's why people forget that. Yep, yeah. so he could read his mind and realize he does have honest intentions, but. Um, yeah, so, and then obviously, oh, by the way, Professor Xavier's wee thing that he goes around is just right out of the comics. It's not out of the X-Men movie, it's right out of the comics. It's the wee yellow floating thing. So, that was pretty cool. It's opened up a lot of doors.
as we now essentially have a girl that can, granted doesn't know how to control it fully yet, but we have a girl who can jump into any universe. That's why Wanda was after her, because she could jump into any universe. Um, she now can, she's now learning how to do that, that bend, so she can control it fully. She's, you, let's be honest, it's going to be in the future where she'll jump into a universe where X-Men will be there, or Deadpool will be there, or Thomas the Tank Engine will be there. <laughs> and I do reckon you'll probably have some strange crossover somewhere. Yeah, somebody, I'm not sure who it was, but for the What If series, somebody really, really wanted the What If series to bring Luke Skywalker in, they wanted to do a crossover with Star Wars. And they said it's the multiverse, nothing can happen. And they're just like, no, that's too much. I think that was just too much. I think that would be. And there would be no real reason for it. They did do this in the comics though. Um, where they jumped into a completely uh, different comic book universe. And I think, I think, I think, I think this was actually DC, but I think Marvel did it too. Where Predator was in their comics, and jump they actually Predator was in their universe fighting like Wolverine and all other stuff. So, so with the obviously that was like a special edition comic, it wasn't like a mainline thing. But you never know; they could just randomly jump into another sci-fi universe and go here. You go, here's a character from your sci-fi universe. Just to see what happens. He put that that really on the roll. I think Star Wars would just be in its own universe, just its own thing. I think I don't. I think they would. Like they've got friggin Samuel L. Jackson playing Nick Fury. No, and he does mention Star Wars and no way at home. No way home. far from home. He mentions he mentions Star Wars. Uh, I just don't think it'd be. It just wouldn't work. I think it, it wouldn't be able to watch Star Wars again if it did that. Like you know, Spider Man exists somewhere along you guys? No. Plus, also, people forget this part as well, Star Wars is based in the past. It's not based in the future, it's based in the past. A long, long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. It's easy, well, there's obviously the lines that you later remember, but people forget that. Ah, this is not like a future thing, this is like, who knows where, in terms of how long ago it was, but it's in the past in theory, so that Star Wars has happened thousands and thousands of years ago in the galaxy that we can't even see. Maybe no, because it doesn't exist, but... <laughs> <coughs> but ghosts exist. Yeah. I do that. I wonder will this open the door for um, Into the Spider-Verse? You know, are they going to do something out there? Like, they could have... They probably, they probably did cross into that there, Into the Spider-Verse universe, did they? It kind of looked like it. Don't know, but it's not ruling anything out. Marvel has done a very clever thing, by the way, by having this whole multiverse thing in their films. Because if they want to reboot their films, they don't have to fully reboot. Yeah, it's just in a different universe, different incarnation. So people were talking about that you could get a, a new Iron Man, yeah. but not be played by Robert Downey Jr. Be, and not actually say it's replacing Robert Downey Jr. It's just a different version of Iron Man because yeah. that in the comics that's happened to you. Marvel, I think people say it never have to reboot. It's just in a different universe. And then yeah, we use a canon, that's class. Exactly, so they just go, oh we need to change this up, we need to get a different actor to play Spider Man, we need to get a different actor to play Wolverine, they can just <coughs> now do that. And still be canon. Mm -hmm. And not canon at the same time. Will this be the same incarnation of Deadpool from the, the two movies or will this be the yep. like, new one? Right. How does he, how does this work where he, does he acknowledge that he's in a different universe, or? He does. Um, no, no, I mean, if, if for Deadpool 3, will he acknowledge that he's not in the same universe that he was in before? Or will it just be that they always were in the same universe? Um, what, I think he made a joke about that. Um, no, uh, I don't know, like, but I think he did, uh, he made jokes about the character uh, that was in his film, what do you call him, Cable, mm -hmm. uh, played by Josh Brolin, who also plays Thanos. Yeah. He made a joke about him playing Thanos. So he did. <laughs> he, 
he calls him Thomas at one point. And he, he says he also calls him Winter Soldier. That's right, he did, he did call him Thomas. And he called him Winter Soldier because of the, his arm. So, so that probably means that <coughs> Cable became Thanos in a different universe and vice versa? Um, probably. <coughs> well, no, I, don't, I think we'll just ignore that part and just have the actor play the same dude. I, mean, I think it was just more of a joke about that way rather than the character becoming Thanos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Josh Brown was a great Cable. Yeah, but so I think Deadpool will get away from it. He'll just turn around. And, I think Deadpool openly acknowledged the joke uh, about the, the universes or something. I think it'll be a joke. Someone, I think someone said in Twitter there's a perfect joke that we'll do where it's like Deadpool's looking at the 20th Century Fox logo and then he looks at the Disney one and he throws the 20th Century Fox one and says, well, I'm part of you now or something. <laughs> um, they did do a kind of joke back in the day as well. I think this was when 20th Century Fox took over and it showed you I think yeah, Ryan Reynolds tweeted it. it showed you Ryan Reynolds applying for a job at Stark Industries when <laughs> he signs the wee contract. <coughs> that was a wee joke about the whole uh, studios buying each other out. I mean, the movie didn't scare me. I didn't jump once. I can appreciate their creativity and for trying. And suppose, you know, for a Marvel movie, they're trying not to go too over the top because while they want to make a horror movie, they do have to bear in mind that kids are going to be watching this here and kids have been following this so they don't want to put too much in they need to draw a line and um, you said there's a little bit of blood and freaking Wanda or Scarlet which has blood to die her face yeah. and just obliterated like that was it was really dark for a Marvel movie but I liked the direction that it was going in it was interesting because it honestly it was refreshing and it was changing things up you know doing what hadn't been done before I was letting you know that not everybody is safe you know, they started off like, you know, realistic and campy, but like the other movies like Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, like <coughs> they were almost camp in a way. But then when it got to Multiverse of Madness, it's starting to take a dark turn. And I'm wondering for the next following movies, will it will it continue to get dark or will it fluctuate back and forth? Like imagine, you know, a Marvel movie coming out, like it starts off campy in the beginning with Iron Man and then like the final movie is like an R rated 18 <laughs> and that's how it ends. Yeah. Well, the way I'm looking at it is now, Marvel always did the thing is where they treated each character obviously in the same universe, so they didn't drastically go different in style, but they did uh, change the theme. Uh, you'll notice that in Shang-Chi, you do get a new martial arts theme. Especially the way they're doing their martial arts. It just, if you watch Asian martial arts films, especially wireframe films, you see that. Not in Chang Chi. They're going, you could just say that's a Western Chinese movie. That's essentially what it is. Um, Doctor Strange, I do think they will go down the line where each character, I think, don't think it will be dark in the sense that, like, Ant Man, it's going to be dark. Thor, uh, Thor, Love and Thunder is clearly having an 80s thing. Uh, I think, uh, I think I'm, I will just have a generally sci-fi heist thing. So I think the next Doctor Strange film might be dark, but not all of them. The next Marvel films will be dark. I just think it'll, it'll stick to that theme. The TV shows will be dark though. I know there'll be a few dark TV shows. I thought, I thought uh, Agent Carter's death was a little bit brutal. Oh yeah, with the shield. <laughs> Slicing right through her, yeah. And the blood coming off the shield. Also, Doctor Strange is also trying to imply your children weren't real, you made them up. Because you watch one division, she made them up with magic, they weren't real. And she was basically in prison on the whole time to do this. To you as well. Like, but the, the kids existed in all the other universes. Yeah. Except for hers, the one season. And there's a very good reason why they didn't exist in the universe. Yeah, yeah. Because they also did imply, he says, well, what are you going to do to their Wanda when yeah. you go to their universe? Where does she go? What are you going to do? You're essentially going to rob their kids of their actual mother. Yeah, it's just yeah. It's cruel and selfish that you don't do that. And she obviously clocked on when she realised that day and she was scaring the crap out of them. 
and like realizing, oh, this is a witch. They actually called her a witch. It's a witch, it's a witch. And they were screaming their heads off, scared and terrified of her. And that's when she realized what she was doing was wrong. Going back to the scary thing, you see the Scarlet Witch, when she's chasing them, she's scary looking. You could put that there in a lot of horror films. They really got that vibe down, thanks to Sam and me. But I reckon that Bruce Campbell one should have been an Evil Dead cameo. Just have him come out for a shotgun on the shirt, not you and so. Just don't explain it. <laughs> Groovy. Groovy.